A few years ago, in the national capital region, there was a plan to connect the Jaipur Highway to MG Road through the Aravalli Biodiversity Park, an urban forest spread over 350 acres that nests in the middle of a concrete jungle. The orientation of this plan would have ruined the forest. This decision was met with protests from about 1400 people that led to the plan being shelved. Why is this place so important in one of the most polluted regions of the world and what makes it different from any other public park? So my name is Vijay Dashmana. What I do is rewilding degraded landscapes. That's my job. So I have worked in the Saravli Biodiversity Park with an NGO called I Am Gurgaon. Now with Hero Motor Corp, looking after this place. We involved people of the city. So all uh, plantation was with the school children, with the uh, with the uh, corporates who were funding us. Their employees to come and plant. And uh, so everybody who lives in this city has some kind of an attachment because they have come and planted at the Ravi Garden. What we are trying to do here is to create biodiversity of the Aravlis. Whereas in a Lodi Garden or a Jahapana Park or any other park, that is not the effort. Effort is to put in plants. And most of the times in the gardens, we are looking at plants as features. This tree looks very beautiful in flowering, good expanse, and therefore we put that plant. Here in a biodiversity park or in a forest ecology, we put in plant because they are in part of an ecosystem. They create a habitat and that's why this is different from a normal park. Aravali Biodiversity Park was a mined landscape until about a decade ago, where quartzite, quartzitic sand and mica was extracted. Stone crushers would churn out grits for developmental work like roadways or building material. In 2004, the Supreme Court banned any mining and stone crushing next to the boundary of Delhi in Gurgaon. When the Municipal Corporation of Gurgaon came into existence in 2009, citizens' initiatives like I Am Gurgaon and Atal Kapoor, an architect, pushed the government to convert it into a public park. This is a 380 acres of land, which had a, a huge amount of encroachments. So people literally were living into the forest. When we went into it, this was full of uh, encroachment, as well as uh, obviously processes juliflora, as well as a huge uh, dumping in the sense that there was a huge amount of construction debris. So we, uh, and, and it was open from all ends. There was uh, no control of the area. Cities are very sanitized spaces. So we want, you know, city to welcome the wilderness. So we said, why don't we rethink the vision of this place? Or we are bringing the forests of Aravli back into the city. When you come to a city, you are looking for public spaces. You are looking for uh, spaces where uh, you can interact with nature. But what was happening was that our whole focus was building and which continues to be a focus. So we were building and building and building. So, uh, and, and there was no emphasis given on green spaces. The park is home to different indigenous forest types like the Dhok forest, Salai forest, Kher forest and the Dhak forest. So here we have forest types like a Dhok forest you find in the Arablis. It has a certain kind character. It, it grows in a certain soil type on certain rocky outcrops. Similarly, a cam will grow in a certain valley in the rocky outcrops. The forests that I had seen in the similar terrain, like Mangarbani forest, the Jeer forest, the Sariska that's available to common people, and the you know up to Jalana, the different kinds of forests that you find, we had kind of picked up elements of those forests and what we realized in those forests there are there would be a dhok forest but the say the valleys will be different folds of the mountains will be different it creates a self-sustaining ecosystem 
wildlife will be dependent on it. These were important factors to consider to make the park into a self-sustaining ecosystem. The ecosystem rejuvenates itself. Then we have um, many species of animals, we have reptiles of many kinds, we have 200 plus species of birds, we have 57 odd species of uh, butterflies recorded here. We have eight species of amphibians in this particular dry with no perennial water body. That tells you that the water is uh, clean. How much ever you may create a self-sustaining system, it needs to be managed. So let me tell you, like the Prosopis juliflora, the Velaiti Kikar, which is a very invasive plant, is brought in by Nilgai every day. The pods are eaten by Nilgai, then it poops up here and then they germinate as soon as the rain comes. So you have to be mindful of it and you have to keep removing the Prosopis juliflora as it is brought in by wildlife. Similarly, Lantana camara. It's a very invasive plant, a shrub. So birds will bring in lantana and then poop here and that it will spread. So similarly, there are many, many herbaceous uh, invasive species that you have to keep removing. Um, so the park needs to be managed. According to a report by the Center for Environment Research and Education, the park contributes 7.07% to the national capital region's demand for oxygen. The International Union for Conservation of Nature has also announced this as the first OECM site in the country. When planting work began, organizations like DLF, Pullman Hotel and Le Meridien provided STP-treated water, which was initially used for irrigation. We don't irrigate much. We used to irrigate about seven to eight times in a year. So <clears throat> that was sufficient for the, these plants and up to three years we irrigated them. Um, so very little irrigation, whenever it was needed, whenever we found a plant in a stress or uh, on the verge of dying, then only we provided irrigation. Otherwise we didn't provide irrigation as such. The Aravalis have the potential to recharge 20 lakh litres of groundwater per hectare. When water flows through the fissured rocks in the Aravalis, the trees act as hurdles to prevent runoff so that they can slowly get absorbed into an aquifer and restore groundwater. What was the thought <clears throat> when we were vegetating this place? We were very mindful of the climatic changes that was happening. Best choice is that the forests that are still resilient in the Aravlis, next door, 10 kilometers from here. That's the best bet that you can, you can put on a, on a landscape. I think what we did right in the biodiversity park was to plant local species which can survive here. There is recruitment happening, which is the seedlings are forming of these forest species and they are germinating. Now, as the, as the temperature increases, as the climate becomes hotter, um, you know, there will, be, there will be change in the species composition, but the, we have a palette which, which is from extreme western Rajasthan to species that you'll find in sub-Himalayan setup. I mean, I'm pretty sure in the next 20, 30 years, unless there is a drastic climatic change, the plants communities are going to survive. We may not survive, but this plant community is definitely going to survive.